Welcome to the Read Network, Channel 103, where we have Katie with us today, and she will be reviewing The Great Debaters. Katie, can you tell us what film style this was in? Ah, this film was styled like a lot of athletic films are, and by that I mean it was um, basically an inspirational tale of how the underdog can overcome a big issue. Now, the big issue for The Great Debaters was that they were the first African-American debate team to go up against a white team, that they were this small debate team that no one had ever really heard of, that had never really been considered very good, and they ended up going up against the national champions at the time, and also that their debate team featured the first female in the history of the Wiley College debate team, and so there were definitely some undertones of sexism at some of these debates. Then, can you tell us about the cinematography of this movie? Ah, uh, this movie used lighting a lot to signify when something was going to go wrong, and by that I mean in one scene, uh, Melvin Tolson, who is the debate team coach as well as an English professor at Wiley College, is at a rally of sharecroppers, and he's an activist. He's working with the sharecroppers to try to improve their conditions. And it's very dark, very shadowy. Um, there's not a lot of lighting anywhere. And then all of a sudden, their, their uh, meeting is interrupted by this group of uh, radicals and many many African Americans are either killed or arrested and that signifies something bad coming and now another scene that uses the darkness to signify badness is when one of the members of the debate team at the beginning of the movie gets into a bar fight and has a knife pulled on him very good now the casting what is your opinion of it I personally liked the casting uh, Denzel Washington both directed and played Melvin Tolson in the movie and I thought because he was the director, as well as one of the main characters who had a lot of influence, um, it sort of fit the character that he was playing. Uh, he had a lot of influence on the film, obviously, because he was directing it. As well as Melvin Tolson in the movie, his character had a lot of influence. Uh, some other actors that I really liked, actors and actresses that I really liked were um, the actress who played Samantha Book, the first female on the debate team. I thought she did a wonderful job of portraying how Samantha Book may have felt as the first female on the debate team and how ambitious she may have felt as well as how discouraged at some point she felt. Um, another character who I thought was very well acted was that of James Farmer Jr. Now James Farmer Jr. was actually on the Wiley College debate team and he was 14 in 1935 at the time of the movie and he was basically a child prodigy who wasn't maybe emotionally equipped to deal with what he was getting into in college, even though intellectually he was ready. And so I thought that that actor did a very good job of portraying the struggle between uh, his emotional age and his intellectual age. So historically speaking, The Great Debaters is based off of a actual event. Could you tell us more about that? Yeah, The Great Debaters is based around the Wiley College debate team of 1935. Now, Wiley College is a small black college in Marshall, Texas, and it is actually still open to this day. And what it focuses around is their 1935 season. The debate team basically went undefeated. Um, and at the end of the season, they did go up against the national champions and win. They were the first African-American debate team to really take on white colleges. And although it is pretty good how they portrayed it, fairly accurate with some of those firsts, there are some historical inaccuracies. Now some of these include at the end of the movie, the Wiley debaters took on Harvard University in the movie. However, in real life, the Wiley debaters took on the University of Southern California, who in 1935 was the reigning champion. Another inaccuracy was that Melvin Tolson, as I mentioned earlier, in the movie he's very active with the plight of the sharecroppers and at one point is even arrested, which prevents him from going with his debate team to their final match. Now, in real life, Melvin Tolson is described as being an activist and being very outspoken about some of the political issues at the time. However, it's never stated that the sharecropping issue was more important to him than other issues. In fact, it's never even mentioned that he was involved with the sharecropping issue. And another thing that's never mentioned is it's never mentioned that Melvin Tolson was arrested or that during the 1935 season, his position as an activist jeopardized that of his team. One other inaccuracy is that in The Great Debaters, the debate team at the beginning of the movie has four people on it. Now, 
Eventually one of them does quit, which means that by the end of the season the debate team is one of three. However, in real life, debate teams typically started as three people, and often all three people would be on stage and debate at the same time. However, in the movie, only two people are ever on stage debating at once. So although there is amount of a fair amount of truth to this movie, there are some inaccuracies. Thank you very much. Now, would you recommend this movie to our viewers? I would. Um, I think its message is very good. The message of overcoming the obstacles such as racism and sexism that stand against you. Also, I think even if you just want to view it um, from an overview perspective and not really consider the deeper messages to it, you'd have a good time watching this movie. It's well acted and the music and lighting are just very good and they make the viewer feel right at home watching it. And that is the Reading Network signing off. Thank you, Katie.